Hello there folks, it is hot with a capital H, 35 degrees the temperature here at Kingston Park this afternoon. That's a sentence I've never had to say before, but you've had plenty of weather reports thrown your way in the last few days, I'm sure. How about the biggest and best preview show around? Suntan lotion applied, shade found, water drunk. It's time for this week's big preview, and this is what's coming up on today's show. As well as the temperature, we'll have all the latest thunder news from Kingston Park, including a new program to develop the game further in the northeast. Back home this week, we'll look ahead to Saturday's latest league offering with the Dewsbury Rams, the visitors to Kingston Park. And braving the heat and the cameras this week to chat all things thunder and settling in the northeast, one of our new boys, Ollie Roberts. But we start this week as ever with a bit of a news roundup and we start with the Thunder community's latest attempt to really extend the sport of rugby league right the way across the North East. They've launched the new Futures programme providing opportunities for girls in years 7 to 9 at school to get involved in the sport. Sessions will be held at Kingston Park every Wednesday up to and including August 10th with internal games, matches and festivals all planned to get more girls into the game. And speaking of summer, it wouldn't be a summer at the Thunder without the latest edition of the Moody Cup. The 2022 version shaping up to be bigger and better than ever. Clubs coming from Cumbria, Lancashire, Northumberland, Tyne and Weir and Yorkshire to take part in one of the biggest grassroots festivals in the North East. August 14th, the date for your diaries, ahead of our first team clash with Lee that afternoon. More information on the website with entries still open. And while we're on about summer, how about a summer season ticket deal to quench your thirst during this heat wave? We have five matches left of the season and you can enjoy a ticket to cover all those games for £65 for adults, £50 concessions, £30 for 16 to 24 year olds and just £10 for under 16s. That's free parking too and you'll qualify for early bird renewals for the 2023 campaign. Not bad at all. Sign up by calling 0191 214 5588 and choosing option 1 or visiting the Kingston Park Stadium box office. That's the off-field matters covered then. What about on the field? The boys, of course, fresh from that wonderful Magic Friday win over the Bradford Bulls right here at Kingston Park, went into the weekend game against Widnes full of confidence, but it wasn't meant to be down in Cheshire. <laughs> Nothing doing against Widness there then, but uh, now we head back home here to Kingston Park and the visit of Dewsbury this Saturday for a 3 p.m. kickoff. And let's face it, if the Rams are to get anything from the North East this weekend, then they're going to have to nullify the threat of our inform number nine. Evo certainly on fire right now at Kingston Park. Tries in his last two games here at home. But enough about us. How much do you know about the Dewsbury Rams themselves? It's time for this week's In Opposition.
So that's the Rams then, but let's focus on ourselves, shall we? And in particular, one of our new boys here at Kingston Park, as you can see. Delighted to be joined by the one, the only, Mr. Ollie Roberts. Ollie, I have to say, this is cold for Newcastle. It's well, normally like over 40 <laughs> degrees, you know. I'm uh, shocked the Yorkshire weather's uh, definitely a bit different to this. <laughs> and, uh, it's been good, it's treated me well since I've been here, to be fair. How have you and the boys kept cold? Or, well, not cold, but cooler over the last few days while it's been hitting 30 odd? The, the beach. <laughs> <laughs> good night, it's been good, to be fair. I think a few boys are in there again today. Yeah. But I've really enjoyed it when I've been up getting finished, getting a good session in the industry over to the beach and just a bit of team bonding, it's, it's been nice. How much has it like affected training? Because obviously it's affected all parts of the country at the moment, we're not used to this sort of weather. No, right? well I think yesterday, we were off yesterday, but I think the Falcons boys had to call their training off yesterday yeah. with the heat, so understandable. Uh, but to be fair, we went on field today, uh, we had a video and gym session, yeah. so hopefully fingers crossed it cools down a bit tomorrow, if not, it's gone, but over. It's what it is. And it's definitely good being at Kingston Park because uh, I mean it's windy on a on a pretty still day here yeah, at Kingston. It, no, Park. it's nice. I like it. It's a real good stadium. Yeah, uh, I'm enjoying playing on it. I'm getting used to the the field. Ah. Yeah, no, it's good. What about Newcastle as a city? Then obviously you've been here for a few weeks now. Obviously you're travelling back and forth to a certain extent. But have you been able to see much of the city? What's been your impressions of the? Park? Yeah, I've had a look around. Some brilliant coffee shops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the coffee shops are absolutely unreal. Yeah, um, but no, the boys took me under the wing, took me yeah. around, showed me around. Like I said, I've been to the beach, Colour Cove, Tyne Mouth. Mm. Uh, really got into it also, I've really enjoyed it. You seem to have settled into the, the kind of the team atmosphere really, really quickly as well. What's been your, your first impressions of the lads in the dressing room and, you know, keep it clean to an extent? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're brilliant to lads. Like I knew a few of them before, I played of course with Kuma. Yeah. Um, and I played with Pat with Ireland. So I knew a couple of lads and a couple of lads around my age and, mm. and stuff. But they've got a brilliant team here, good, good set of young lads. Um, we're, we're building something special, but like it does take time. Like Rome on built in the day. Yeah. Um, we just got to keep focused, keep doing the things right, like at the weekend losing. We didn't start the game well, yeah. um, just little bits and bats and then having no subs left through injuries and so on. Everything that could have gone against us went against us really, but we still pulled it back and just lost. Um, the try at the end, disappointing, but yeah. we just need to learn from them areas now and then push forward. We'll come on to, on to witness in a second, but I know you were meant to join at the start of the 2023 campaign. You joined a little bit earlier. Yeah. Where did that decision come from to join a little bit earlier and get yourself up here at the North East? Uh, I think it was my agent, uh, Kev Brown and Yesin. Um, they were speaking to, at the time, it was Freddie and Dennis. Yeah. Um, they were looking to try and get a middle up here as soon as possible. Um, and I had the opportunity with being at um, Thankful to Richard Fulis and Ian Watson, they, they let me start my journey early. Mm. Uh, they knew I were coming here next year. I think they needed some cap space and so on, so it, it benefited in all directions. Um, so they all worked well together and, and got it done smoothly, so I can be very grateful for Richard and so on for getting that done. I know when you signed you, you were kind of talking about how it, it was quite an easy decision really to move up here. Why yeah. was it an easy decision to come up here? To be fair, like when I spoke to Kev Majin, I didn't I didn't really fish around yeah. for clubs and stuff. I, I knew Dennis, I knew Freddie yeah. at the time, and I knew what they were going for, and I'd been up here to watch a couple of games. And I, I just like the feel of the thing and the, the direction the club's going in, the, the owner, yeah. what he wants to do, and he don't want to do it unrealistic. The, they've set a platform out to do it over a certain amount of years and gradually build and, and have something that's going to be sustainable. And of course, bringing fans in, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, and the cost of championships is growing. That league itself is growing and blossoming every year. It's a challenge with like Lee and your Featherstone and your Batleys that are turning mm. people over and York. There's some good teams in there and good competition, so I, I, I want to challenge myself really and be part of something here that's potentially building over the next couple of years and, and be part of that. And you didn't have you know, too long to work under Freddie, obviously, with him leaving, but what's it been like working under, under Dennis? Yeah, I think the day I got here was the day that Freddie <laughs> parted, but yeah. it, it's just one of the things coaches come and go, Freddie's a good bloke and he's yeah. moved on to his next thing. So be it, Dennis has filled in and he's been unreal. I mm. uh, really enjoyed working with Dennis. Yeah. He, he gets the best out of the lads and gets them on side. Uh, and it makes you accountable. Yeah. Um, so, like from the game of the weekend, I know, I look, like I, did, I personally didn't feel like I played well, so my lads didn't. But then it makes you feel like you didn't play well for him. Yeah. So when you're letting your coach down, it's a bit more serious th than that. Um, so he's really got the boys buying into him. But like I said, we're all one built in a day. We are going to get things wrong and we're going to learn from our mistakes and build on. You've already had plenty of experiences up here as well. I mean, you were thrown in straight away against Workington, then came that magic Friday win against Bradford. Yeah. Just kind of focusing on that. 
What was that like for you as an experience, that Magic Friday win? Unbelievable. So I actually came up and watched the previous Sky game, uh, previous TV game against Witness here. Yeah. And I thought like the atmosphere here was brilliant. The, the stuff they did before the game, during the game, the entertainment, the yeah. music, the fans. It was just fantastic. And I thought like this is serious. This is like a night. The stadium is mm. brilliant. Like I've been playing. I've been used to playing a, a giant stadium and so it's a yeah. big stadium. It doesn't look like there's many numbers in there because it's spread out, yeah. and it still is. But we're here, everyone's quite compact on top of each other, and you do get a good, good atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, and of course, playing that Bradford game when they did the deal for the tickets, opening up for the Magic Weekend, I thought it was fantastic and a good cause as well, uh, with the shirts, uh, going for pride. Um, it's got purpose to it, and everything's got like a meaning. Uh, and I think we just head in the right direction again. We can't not talk Magic Friday and not talk about the input of the skimmer of what he went through that yeah. week, obviously his family went through. How much respect, how much admiration do you have for, for Josh after playing, not just in that game, but playing the way he did in that game too after that? Unbelievable, and I think him as a person and his family, he is a credit. Yeah. Unbelievable bloke, and what a person on and off the field is an absolute legend of a bloke. Mm -hmm. Me coming in and knowing him, what, four or five weeks? Oh, nothing but respect for him, he's, he's, a, he's a proper leader and to show what he did and what, what tough times he'd been through that week and how he condoned himself and, and played and he was just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and I think the boys had to buy into that and, and follow suit to him. He set the standards of playing so well. Yeah. He brought everyone up with him and that game was for him and his family. And I think going out of the stadium, a lot of people were kind of talking not just about Josh's performance, but the whole team's performance. They were saying, you know, it's been one of the best Thunder performances we've seen in many, many years. You mentioned Witness. How disappointing was it to not back that up against Witness at the weekend? Yeah, I think sometimes it doesn't help when you play so well against a team like that when you're growing, because I think you get a little bit cocksure of yourself, and that's what happened to us. I think we thought we'd roll in to the Witness game mm. off the back of the Bradford game without having to try as hard as what we should do. Yeah. I think having the meeting today and having a bit of a reality check, um, speaking about each other, you can't go into every game expecting. We need to go into every game knowing our role yeah. and bringing our best game. It ain't going to be handed to us on a dinner plate because the championship is a tough competition. Yeah. It's a hard game, um, different to Super League. After playing so many games up there, coming and playing championship, it's a different world. Uh, brilliant standard of rugby, but sometimes it could be tougher. Yeah. Slower, it'd be faster. It's just just a different mix, and it's a brilliant, brilliant competition. Um, we just need to work out our structure, how we need to play perfectly, what suits us best, and we're still in them stages of working out what my what my good is, yeah. what Mitch is good at, good at, and it just we'll, we'll build off that. Once everything connects and all the jigsaw fits, mm -hmm. we'll become a different team again. But we're just growing. The way you're speaking now, and, and the way you spoke when you signed, you said how you know you're 27 now. You want to be like a midfield general. You feel yeah. like you're at that sort of edge. Do you feel like you're fitting into that role well here at Thunder? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am in the first couple of games. I felt like I, I could do myself well, played all right. But I need to make it consistent. Yeah. Uh, Similar witness game, I need to step a bit more there personally. So I, I, I need to be more consistent in that role if, if I want to make that my role. I need to be more consistent at it, which is something for me to work on. Of course, Dennis will guide me and I'll learn from the older blokes like Mitch and Akuma that are in that side of the role. So I can just pick up from that. So bearing that in mind, what do you take from the kind of well, not just the witness performance and the witness result, but the performances so far into this game against Dewsbury this week? We can do it, can't we? We've proven we can do it. We did the Workington, we did the Bradford. Yeah. Um, we just can't get complacent with myself. Them wins mean nothing. So if we beat some 100 nil the week before. That's been and gone. So that's gone then. We need to reset. Zero zero. We need to go again and win the next game. Scrap that and we go again. Mm. We can't be saying this next block or we've won two out of the three blocks. No, no. Every game is a must win yeah. for us now. So we need to test ourselves, better ourselves and build a platform for going into the future for next year and the year after. And of course it's about momentum I suppose as well. I know, you know there was the witness defeat but that was a way. In terms of home momentum, Thunder are absolutely rolling at the minute and momentum's that key word in sport isn't it? Yeah it is yeah and I think at the back end of the season we've got quite a few home games. We've also got some tough games to come and play. Yeah. Um, the likes of London, they're, they're pipping teams off mm. and so on. Halifax are in there. York have had a couple of losses today. The losses are going to be bouncing back. Yeah. Um, so we just need to basically focus on ourselves focus on what we're good at yeah. and, and be better at it and just keep chipping away at stuff like that and I think we'll do well. So as we just head into the final few games of the season, what represents success now for Thunder come the end of the season? There's a few tough games left, yeah. but what position on the table would you say you're looking at? I think after the meeting we've had today and so on, we're not, we're not going to be 
chewing our mind, thinking about positions, so we need to just think about each and every game. Yeah. So we've always our eight games left now, so yeah. we need to just do our job. We need to set our platform for them eight games and roll on to build for next year, basically. Yeah. We've set our standard against like the Bradford game, like you say, one of the best games that we've played up here. Mm. That's a platform, but it still won't good enough. We yeah. still had mistakes, we still had errors. Um, so it's basically just a learning curve for us now. So we need to set our platform, set our stall out and build on for the next year and it'll come. Ollie, thanks very much for your time, but before we let you go, we normally do this thing called the treatment table uh, oh, right. every single, well, before every single home game. And normally it's a feature that's about 10 minutes long because we've got, you know, like 15 lads out injured or whatever it might be. There's some good news this week. We're not doing the treatment table. Paul gets away with it once again for another week. What is that good news, Ollie? Well, there's only really Jesse that's still out, that's coming back from uh, his injury, and he's, to be fair, he's been out running and been doing lots of things. One more appointment with the specialist mm. at the end of this week, so hopefully some good news for him. Yeah. And then there's potentially maybe Woodsy with the head knot. Yeah. Um, other than that, we're, we're fully fit and raring. Some of the best injury news we've had all season. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. It's, um, I think everyone's getting used to the field now and uh, getting, getting used to a bit of a bleak. Yeah. Well, long may it continue, mate. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure seeing you today. Thanks oh, for thank your you time. Appreciate no it. Problem. Ollie Roberts, of course, with us this week on this week's big preview. But uh, that just about does it. So thanks to the main man himself, Ollie, and thank you to you guys as well for your continued support. We are right back here at Kingston Park, 3 p.m. kickoff for the visit of the Dewsbury Rams in the Betfred Championship. We want to see you here. Hopefully the temperatures will have dropped a little bit by then. But for now, from me, Andy Sixsmith, this has been the big preview. We'll see you on Saturday.